Hey, welcome back to Guillotined 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today, what we are going to do is work our way through orbital diagrams. I think orbital diagrams are a lot of fun. Um, it follows the rules of the quantum numbers that we learned before. They're very straightforward. Once you get them, you get them. Um, but they can be a little tricky um, to begin with. But we'll walk through this. Oh, big day for Hippo. Got, he's a quantum ranger now. That's that's pretty, pretty big news around here. Um, so... Uh, He's ready to learn how to do orbital diagrams. He passed the test of quantum numbers. That's kind of a big deal. And so an orbital diagram is simply a shorthand way of representing where electrons are. If you start thinking about S and P and D and F orbitals and how they kind of overlap like Russian nesting dolls, that can be a real pain in the butt to try to visualize. And, and so orbital diagrams are really a no-nonsense way, a model of representing where electrons are, and, it, and it's very simple to follow. The basic idea is that electrons are going to get to as close to the nucleus as possible, and just like if you were to drop M&Ms into a sugar cone or a waffle cone, they'll, they'll stack up at the bottom and then they'll stack up from there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to <laughs> graphically represent any type of orbital with a box. S, P, D, F, it doesn't matter. And uh, we'll show you how you distinguish between them later. It's the number of boxes that will indicate what kind of orbital it is. And we will represent electrons by either up arrows or down arrows to represent the two spins. The first arrow is always a spin up with a top up, up arrow and the other one's half arrow down. And you'll see why we do half arrows in a second here. It's much easier to, uh, to write a half arrow than a full arrow. Again, that sounds kind of dumb, but after drawing a couple hundred uh, electrons, uh, you'll, you'll realize that you like half arrows too. And so that is a symbolic representation of electrons in an orbital. Those are two electrons in an orbital, and no orbital can hold more than two electrons. And so, uh, as I said before, the only way we can really distinguish the different types of uh, orbitals is to look how many orbitals are in the subshell. An S subshell is only going to be able to hold two electrons. It's only one orbital. Uh, P's can hold three, D's can hold five, and F's can hold uh, seven orbitals. And so that means that each of those subshells have a certain max number of electrons. S can hold two, P can hold six, D can hold ten, F can hold fourteen. Now most of that information will not be seen again. Uh, really all you're going to look for for how many boxes you have next to each other, and that's going to indicate the subshell. And once the subshell shows up, shows up <laughs> you get all the orbitals in the subshell. All right, And the rules are pretty simple. Uh, electrons are going to fill up the lowest energy orbitals first. All uh, energy, all orbitals in the same subshell are considered equivalent energy. Um, and, uh, and so we need to know what order they fill in. Now it might seem like this shouldn't be much problem at all. You know, you might think that it's just, oh, I'll fill up each energy level. Uh, but you will see that we run into a problem. So for instance, on the first energy level, we only have 1s, right? And on second energy level, we start getting 2s and 2p, and this seems very straightforward. The third energy level, we have 3s, 3p, and 3d, and notice as we go up, we have increasing energy. But now we start running into a problem because we're going to start finding that the, that the energy levels start kind of overlapping. Uh, 4s is such a low energy that it's actually a lower energy than a 3d. And then it just starts getting messier from there, and they start getting sort of entangled with each other. And so we can't just count up subshells going from everybody in the third energy level, everybody in the fourth, everybody in the fifth. They start getting really tangled together. And so what we need is some way to figure out in what order subshells fill. And so we'll definitely uh, show you a, a way to do that. And, and when I learned, it was called the handy order filling chart. But you can call it whatever you want. Um, you should be able to create this from memory. And you'll see it's really not that big of a deal to do from memory. And so what we'll do is we'll create this here. Now, some people put this vertically and some people put this horizontally. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you can have an S orbital on every energy level. You can have P's starting at the second, D's starting at the third, and F's starting at the fourth. You don't have to go beyond uh, F, it doesn't exist, and you don't have to go down below 7 either because that's going to be enough to hold all electrons in their ground state. Um, and then you'll notice that 6F, 7D, and 7F are sort of um, grayed out a little bit. Uh, that's because uh, you won't use them. So if you put them there, that's fine. If you don't put them there, that's fine. Uh, this will be enough, though, to hold all the electrons for any type of element that you'll need until we discover some new elements. <laughs> All right, and the way they fill, if you draw it this way, are in downward left angles. And so as an arrow goes through one, that shows the next one that's gonna fill up. So the first 
orbital every time is going to be 1s, then 2s, then 2p, then 3s, then 3p, then 4s, then 3d, and 4p, and 5s, and et cetera, et cetera, until you get them all done. And so what you would keep doing is you keep bringing out subshells until you have enough subshells to hold the number of electrons in question. Now, technically, every atom has every subshell, but we're only going to show the subshell. <laughs> <laughs> only going to show the subshells that get used every time. Okay? And they all feel the same way. And so it gets, it gets very simple after a while. So you can kind of imagine this like a game. And pretend that you worked uh, for a... And imagine, I'm, I'll come out with an app one of these days called uh, uh, Bus Authority for Small School District. <laughs> and you have to send buses out for various field trips. All right? You have four different size buses, one with two seats, well, one with actually one seat that holds two kids, one with three seats that holds six kids, one with five seats that holds 10 kids, and one with seven seats that hold 14 kids. And so you send out the buses, but you have to send them out in a very specific order every time. And so the first bus you would send out is what you would call bus 1S, and that would hold up to two kids, all right? But if you needed to get more than two kids on a field trip, then you would send out what bus next? Right, 2S. And so it would be the next bus that comes out, and then the, that's right, 2P bus, and then the 3S bus. And again, you only bring out the subshells you need. But once the 2P bus sh shows up, it, the whole bus shows up. You don't, you, don't, you don't get the first third of it. And so even if you don't have enough kids to fill the bus, the whole bus shows up. After the 3S, then you get the what? That's right, the 3P and the 4S. All right, again, you'd only get one bus at a time. And you should write the uh, bus numbers underneath, 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, uh, 4s, etc. And what you keep doing is you keep bringing out more and more buses until you have enough buses to hold all the kids. Now we're getting pretty high up. Um, now when you run out of room, you, you can just put the next one above it. It doesn't really matter. Now, there's two ways to do these. I like to stagger up because the idea of staggering up kind of reminds me that these are higher energy. And therefore, if I were to drop little electrons in here, they'd roll down to the bottom. But another way of doing this is just to spread out the subshells and keep them all in the same line. And you'll see that a lot, too. You just have to be really careful about leaving space in between your subshells, uh, or else they're all going to blend together, and all you're going to have is a lot of boxes, and everybody will be confused. And so what we're going to do is we're going to fill up every single box here. And notice the pattern here and see if you can pick it up with the way electrons fill. So here comes the kids. All right, we'll start putting them in the buses. And so look, look, look at the way kids fill the buses. So now you're saying that what, what kids will do, and, and this, is, this is normal for kids, is what they'll do is every kid will grab their own seat first, and then they'll double up. The school district isn't going to send out a new bus just because you want your own seat. And so there we go. We fill up every seat. Every seat gets filled up, and then two do a seat, my own seat, a share a seat. Okay, and notice how everybody gets their own seat, and then they fill up and double up. And only after all the seats get filled up does the district send out a new bus. And so it's the same every time. Now, again, we're working our way up through the periodic table. Remember that uh, each one of these represents a new element because we're adding new electrons. Now, we're assuming right now we're working with neutral atoms. And so based on the number of electrons, uh, if it's a neutral atom, it equals the number of protons, and hence you have the identity of the element. But you can do the same thing for ions. Um, and then all bets are off. So uh, you can only tell what element this is if it's a neutral atom, or if you know the charge, how many electrons it's gained or lost. And so what we did is we just found a home for 118 electrons. Pretty impressive. All right, and every single orbital diagram that you have to draw is in here somewhere. All right, and as we work our way up, we start adding more and more electrons. Okay? And it always feels the same way. So if we made a, a game out of this, it would actually be an incredibly boring game uh, because it would be the same every time. It's just how many kids are you putting in the bus. All right? And so before we wrap up here, uh, there's just one other rule that we have to talk about, and that's the idea of Hun's rule. All right? Um, by the way, this is called the off-bow principle. This, this filling order is called the off-bow principle. Um, Anyway, so notice the way subshells are filled. Uh, Hun's rule states that uh, electrons will occupy separate orbitals of equal energy before they pair up. Again, that's the everybody's going to get their own seat on the bus before they start doubling up seats on the same bus. All right? And that's the most stable arrangement. They spin opposite ways because that minimizes repulsion. Remember, electrons have negative charges, so they don't really like each other. Just like if you're sitting next to your sibling on a bus, you don't really like them much either, so you're going to try to minimize uh, any interaction. And so I'll show you two things for carbon here. All right, which one of these is correct? 
Yeah, they both have six electrons, but the one on the right is correct. The one on the left is obviously wrong, uh, because again, notice that uh, you've got um, two in a seat, and you should have been spreading out. And that's it. That's how you do orbital diagrams, huh? Uh-oh. There's crazy koala. <laughs> so what we'll do next time is, uh, I know that's an awful lot of boxes to draw, um, but next time what we'll do is we'll show you how to abbreviate that a little bit um, into what are called uh, electron configurations and finally noble gas abbreviations. All right? And a noble gas abbreviation is so abbreviated, it's probably on a periodic table that you have. And so uh, thanks for watching. I know that was a lot to cover. Um, but go ahead and practice, and you'll get real good at it real quick. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.